Here we go, coming up on the right-hand side. This is uh, when they talk about classic stadiums. I don't know why they ever bring this one up. Probably because it's a bunch of eggheads playing in here. Um, for all you guys who are like, they don't even go to school. Watch, watch Ivy League sports or shut the fuck up. Here it is. Look at that old ass stadium. I wonder if there's a way for us to get some footage of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on limb and say, you know, it's, it's obviously influenced by the Roman Coliseum. I went to a BU Harvard game back there a long time ago when they used to have a, uh, they used to actually have a football team. I'm gonna pull in here whether you can or you can't. All right, look at this. Post 9/11, I'm able to do this shit. Dude, how great is this? This is how stadiums used to be. You used to be able to just walk into them. This is phenomenal. I remember a long time ago, I took a trip down to Florida and I walked into the old stadium where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers used to play. Back when they had the cream sickle uniforms and Doug Williams was on the team. Fuck that, you gotta get this right here. Look at that. See, old school horseshoe design. You sit on stone. Look at this. This is phenomenal. You filming a segment here? Huh? Are you filming your segment here? Yes. I'm a, I'm a fan. Oh, you are? Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Hey, no problem. No problem. See that? That's one. Yeah, I came here a long time ago. Came here to a Harvard BU game, and I remember uh, BU was playing that that stupid song. You know that? Ba da 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 da. And it was a ba ba da da da. Go BU. And they had this giant sign that said "Screw BU." And to my third grade eyes, that was like the edgiest thing ever. There's a girl whose butt cheeks are hanging out when she's going up the stairs. You gotta get it. Wait for it. There you go. All right, enough, enough, enough. How many times you got to go up? Uh, we're going all the way around. Oh, all the way around? Yeah. Dude, I had no idea your hand was that fucking wet. Well, dude. You should have gave me the fist bump. There we go. See that? It's also wet. All right, there you go. Harvard Stadium. All right, I'm not going to lie to you. That's like the coolest thing ever, that that's just open like that. And they still let their students go up and down them, you know? They were in good shape, too. You know something? That's why they're so fat down the south. All those SEC stadiums just locked up like a drum. Those motherfuckers show up on Saturday and start barbecuing. You know what's funny? I want to do that workout. That's the type of shit I like doing. I can't stand there just, you know. I did that in the 80s, going to the gym. You know, come on, push it up. You got to walk. <laughs> Blowing out your rotator cuffs lifting for this football team you don't play for it's like what the fuck am i doing if you live in this area you, you got to go to a, you have to go to a game there go to the harvard yale game and just go there and you know what's awesome is you're probably going to be in the stands with one of the future presidents of the united states that's one of the coolest things so bring your video camera any rich kid with their fucking loafers on just take video of them maybe you can uh maybe you can influence an election in the future if you don't like the guy or you can just bribe him. Get a sack of money, kid. You know what I'm saying? Season tickets to the Pats, the Bruins, fucking Celtics. You can just edit this, all right? I thought they proved that that sort of exercise didn't work like 20 years ago. You know, I bet he's a hurdler. That's one of those sports you just can't get any pussy in. You know what I mean? What did he die? I was a hurdler. I could really lift my legs up. <laughs> it's one of the gayest things I ever did. You know, it oddly felt pretty good. <laughs> it was very freeing. You know what I want to do tonight? You know, whenever they bring you up, they always got to bring you up with some badass music. Like I've been coming up to Back in Black. I don't know who sings this song, but I want to come on stage with that song. Do it to me one more time. <laughs> This is fucking stupid, right? Coming up here on the left, you're gonna see the uh, the half shell, which is where every July 4th the Boston Pops used to play. I used to go down there when I was a kid. We went down there one year and we saw Arthur Field uh, <laughs> and his fucking white hair. I like classical music. Fucking makes you smart. 
we used to, we used to go down there. It was hilarious. And you listen to this classic music. And that's back when you could be absolutely shit-faced in public and nobody, nobody cared. I just remember going down there, just being scared of all these drunk people, yet there were families and there was all this beautiful music. Bum, 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 bum. Somebody all of a sudden you just hear that, that unmistakable sound of a stream of urine hitting grass and mud, and then the, just this circle would open up. What was I supposed to do? The fucking porta party's like 12 yards away, kid. Has it gotten old yet? <laughs> it's never gotten old for me, and I don't give a shit. Shut it off, you have the, you have the power. She's riding a fucking bike. Jesus Christ, is she out of her mind? Wow. This has always been a nice drive. Look at the John Han Hancock building right there. The original one to the left. That's where all the founding, uh, founding fathers signed some stuff that got probably reversed in the last dozen years or so. The amount of times I drove drunk on this fucking highway trying to find the right exit. It's unreal. The fact that I only got arrested for that one time really just boggles my mind how fucking stupid I was. I made a U-turn on that right there, came up the other way and there was a cop. He let me go, kid, because he was a fucking good shit. That's another thing out here. He's a good shit. <laughs> ah, dude, he's a wicked good shit. Oh, it's right through there. That's where the half shell was. Once again, another huge buildup for nothing. Right here. should be right here. Right there. There it is. The half shell. Government Square, where the fuck do I go? Ah, uh, Jesus. Right over there is an unbelievable hotel um, called the Liberty Hotel. Can you, can you get through? You see the bars on, on the windows? Can you get that? Yeah. Yeah, that used to be, uh, used to be a prison. And now they've, they've turned it into a uh, hotel. And they have this whole jail sort of... Uh, they, they kept some of the cell doors, especially in the bar area. And uh, you can't help but go in there and feel, uh, I don't know, just disrespectful. The amount of horror that happened in there. And you're like, um, can I get the eggs benedict with the hollandaise sauce on the side, please? Thank you. Close your eyes, you hear the sounds of a man being raped. All right, up here is uh, Government Center. And believe it or not, I went there. They used to, that's where they used to have all the parades. I went there when the, the Boston Celtics won in 1986. Uh, I went there, and uh, and then later on that year, I went there for Red Sox Appreciation Day. 1986, I went to Government Center and I uh, when uh, for the Boston Boston Celtics championship parade. It was awesome. Little did we know that that was going to be the last one for uh, 22 years. And uh, and then later on that year. The Boston Red Sox totally fucking blew it against the New York Mets. But we, we were so starved for a championship, they still had a, not like a parade, they had Red Sox Appreciation Day. And I went down there, and I swear to God, Bill Buckner got a round of applause. We applauded him. We were, like, we were still numb with what the fuck had happened. So he came up like, ah, it's all right, it's all right. Or maybe it was just that group of people. The kind of people who would watch a team blow a World Series and then go, yeah, but we appreciate you. Everybody gets a ribbon. Be honest with you, I think we just wanted to skip school and get shit-faced. I vaguely remember setting off an alarm in a building. I went to an, in the elevator. I went in there and I thought for some reason it would be wacky to push the floor number with my nose and I got one of these little Irish noses. But the alarm one, you know, the, the floors were, buttons were flush. But the alarm, you know, was out like that. So my giant fucking forehead hit it. <laughs> and there was all these regular people going to work. And I was like, I had a 12 pack in me. I was hammered. And I just stuck my nose in <laughs> my head and set off the alarm. And then the, the, the regular people just sort of uh, just got off. Some guy just started pissing in the middle. It was hitting cement. That's what it was. He was hitting cement and he had his hands on his hips and he was just pissing straight down and there were kids there and nobody got arrested. Come on, knock it off, knock it off. 
That's all it was. Knock it off or really? Like what you had to do to get arrested back then was just mind boggling. Let's go, buddy. Hurry it up. Finish up. <laughs> I think that's why they didn't arrest him because it really sounded like he was trying to get it out as quick as he could. <laughs> so he was making the effort. Kind of like the people on the crosswalk. He was making the effort. That's why he's had his hands on his hips. He was, he was just squeezing that bladder. Now, one of the great things about coming to Boston is any venue you go by, you're going to see a championship banner from recent years. Deal with it, other sports fans from different cities. That's just how it is. Go ahead, chant a year at me. You got nothing. I am in sports fucking euphoria. Which brings me back to Dan Shaughnessy. Why is he still gloomy? <laughs> the Red Sox don't even deserve. Every year, he throws in the towel in May. How many more copies of The Curse of the Baby are you going to try and sell? It's over. <laughs> it's fucking over. It's great. You know? All Yankee fans are now, they're just loud assholes living in the past. We got 27, that's all they say. That's music to my ears. Just not to hear that 1918 Babe Ruth shit again. It's just fucking awesome. Here we go, the Boston Garden. This is the penalty box. Back in the day, that's where you, you drank. Back when I was drinking, and uh, right here. The garden! The fucking TD North Garden, dude! Fucking bankers, bunch of pieces of shit, kid, and the Fed. Am I right? You go on YouTube? See, there's the guys, they played some fucking rugby, or I don't know what the hell they played. They go in there and go boozing. After you, they're very polite. Now, if that was a movie, you'd smash cut to them fucking four hours from now, just swinging on somebody. This is what they replaced the Boston Garden with. They went to Home Depot and just bought a bunch of cinder blocks, and that's what they bought. I really have to go in there and get a Bruin Stanley Cup championship one, because I got the all-white one, which basically makes my head look like it's floating, because I'm so pasty. So I, <laughs> I want to get the black one. Jesus Christ, 1983 is when I first came to a game here. That's almost 30 years ago. What the fuck? That's unbelievable. They played the Canadians, of course they lost. <laughs> we went with the French kids. The, uh, the what do you call them? The, the, they come across seas. Exchange students. Exchange students, yeah. And uh, so they, they rooted for the Canadians because, you know, Canadians were f from, f you know, French speaking Quebec, basically. And uh, they would, I got I to answer, they were, they were screaming and cheering, that type of stuff. And uh, I remember our French teacher was getting nervous that they were going to get the shit kicked out of them. But they were still just kids, so. But they didn't give a fuck. Like, they, didn't, they were waving these, they, I don't know where they got these Canadian flags. I don't know where they got them. Think about that shit. That's pretty ballsy. They came over, they were high school students, right? If I went over to France, especially my limited ability to speak French, if we went to one of their fucking games over there, I would root for the home team. I wouldn't be going over there fucking waving a flag in somebody's fucking berate face. It's just like you're just looking for it, right? A German flag. Give him shit about the marginal line. <laughs> See, these classic Boston kids. It's all about sports out here. The dad's got a Patriots jersey. Fucking little ginger there's got the fucking Red Sox and the other one's got the other one. That venue was insane. And I used to go, I used to only go to uh, Bruins and Canadians games because I love the fights. And I was actually, I was at that bench clearing brawl game. That one with Terry O'Reilly grabbed somebody. Nylon was going to the dressing room and he pushed Ken Lindsman. I was at that game. A friend of mine, his parents had season tickets and for some reason he couldn't go. Me and another buddy of mine went and we were sitting, we were sitting, uh, we were sitting in the upper deck right across from the fight. And that's when the benches used to face each other. So when you see the Canadians skating across from the ice, basically the view that you see on TV, it's on, uh, Bill, see you later tonight. All right, man. It's on the, uh, it's on YouTube. If you look up Bruins, Canadians, bench clearing brawl, I want to say it was like 85 or 86. It's fucking awesome. All right, is that supposed to be Bobby Orr? 
Stu, that okay. statue looks nothing like Bobby Orr. Please focus in on it. That's Bobby Orr. He looks like he's doing the old man face from my act. All right, come on. He looks like he put the puck in his own net. Ah, I ruined it. Ah. It's a typical new stadium, you know. It, I don't know. I'll show you. Come on. Look at that back-to-back -back Montreal. See, this is the deal. Back in the day when they used to really fight, when they had a home and home, you'd always go to the first one. If you went to the first one, that was the best because they'd set the tone. <laughs> it'd be like, I swear to God, it seemed like 10 fights in the game. So here's the pro shop in Little Gear. Closed. What? You gotta be shitting me. Come on, man. Look, at the, there it is right there. There it is right there. All that Stanley Cup stuff. Ah. All right, we're gonna go into this bootleg shop right up here where it says photo, tickets, we buy, sell. You know something? There used to be a great pro shop in the old garden when you come out. It was right on the right-hand side. It was just one of those, it wasn't, didn't look like the team owned it, you know, it was just, ah, it was awesome. I really am just a cranky old man. So, this one's closed too. There it is, right there. This one's a little too much, though. Oh, look at this. The NBA World Champions, they got everything. They got Mother Teresa. They got Mother Teresa. I'm waiting for, waiting for someone to write like a tell-all about Mother Teresa. You just find out who she really was. So I don't know what it is about, probably because I drank so much when I was down here. There's something about when I walk around down here, it makes me want to drink like fucking 12, 12 pints of beer. I don't know. Remember the good old days you could do that? You know what's funny uh, about those sports bars is... You know, NFL Sunday, you go down there. You never get a table. I love those girls who go down and act like they're fans, but they dress like strippers. Like they'll get a jersey way too small and just shred it. Just sitting there walking around trying to get attention. Surprised that no one's come up with a name for those kinds of girls yet, you know? And right over there is the North End, which I wish I knew much more about, you know? Because for my money, Italians make the best food ever. Ever. It's not even close. I don't want to hear it. Oh, you know what? I fucking ate my balls over there one time doing stand-up at the Fisherman's... They had this thing, the Fisherman's Feast. And it's this big outdoor festival. And we and me and this comedian, Rick D'Elia, we got... Nick's Comedy Stop booked us for this private gig. And we both, like, idiots thought that we were moving up in the world. Like, the big club booked us. And it was this fucking gig outside at, like, this time of the day. It was, like, 5.30 or 6.00. And there was this band playing, all these old Italian guys, you know, playing like Volare, whoa, da 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 da, da right? And <laughs> they just brought us up. And there was all these old ladies sitting there, hanging out of the windows. I mean, it looked like they were waiting for Dean Martin to come down the street singing a song. And instead, it had us two fucking idiots going up there. And I'll never forget the look on Rick's face as he was doing stand-up. He had this, this look of shock in trying to get them. And I, it, what sucked was I couldn't enjoy the laugh because I knew I had to go on after him. And I was going to do probably even worse. But, uh... Oh, Jesus Christ. That's one of those ones where you just, you just look at your watch. All right, it's 20 to 6. Hour from now, this is all going to be over. I'll just push it down. I won't remember it. <laughs> get my money, and I'll get the fuck out of here. And you know what the worst part was? Waiting. The waiting for the ass kicking was worse. Once you got up there, once you started, the clock was ticking. With every bomb... You were, you were one joke closer to, to getting off stage and... Uh, I think I still kind of resent Nick's comedy stuff for putting me out on that one. Because they, they know that that wasn't a good idea. They probably overcharged him for the fucking gig and then paid us shit. That's how good a businessman I am. I figured that out 17 years later. 
Well, they got a merry-go-round here. What has happened to this town? Fucking patriots have a lighthouse? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that beautiful, beautiful structure with all those homeless people sleeping in there, urinating on people. But on the outside, it's tremendous. Look at that. That fucking eagle up there. That's very Nazi-esque for some reason. I don't know. I, have you ever seen that footage where they blow up the swastika? That's really reminding me of that for some strange reason. This is an architectural marvel. I don't understand if you can get near this. I don't understand how this building stays up. It's like a goddamn dreidel. How does that stay up? One of these days, it's going to fall and there's going to be a bunch of morons like me who never took any sort of architectural design courses. I'd just be like, dude, what the fuck do you expect? It's a fucking dreidel. Back in the day, this place was known as the combat zone. And because uh, there was all kinds of hookers, hooers, guns, all that type of shit. All the stuff that you don't want to be involved in. I mean, I don't know what, because I came in sort of the tail end of it. Like I said, I grew up in the safe suburb, so... Uh, just whenever there was some sort of death, it always seemed to be uh, down here in this place, the combat zone, which I think is one of the great names of a part of a city. And you just drove this loop, came around here, right? And then right here in the corner was the shadiest fucking bar ever called like Harry's or something. We went in there one night and I swear to God, it looked like, remember on good times when they would dress people up like pimps and it was totally over the top? People would fucking dress like that in there. And it was one of those, yeah, this was it. This was it, right here. If anybody doubted me, this was it. You drove right around this block. This is where all the hookers were. This is where you could drink underage and uh, get into all sorts of fucking trouble. They actually used to serve me. I remember I, I used to, I was, I was the oldest out of our crew and I was only 20. And I had this howdy doody, didn't have a whisker on my face. And I walked up, my friends told me, come on, you're the only person who didn't walk up to the bar and order a drink. You got to go up and go do it. So I fucking, I, all right, I walked up there and I, I'm like, can I get a vodka Collins? <laughs> That's what I ordered. The guy who goes to order, and the guy, the bartender, who looked like Charles Fleischer, sat there making the drink, never took his eyes off me, and he just goes, you know, you look like you're, you look like you're about 14 years old. And I just sat there like, <laughs> there's nothing I could say, because I did. Who would have thought years later I would be working right here at the fucking Wilbur? Can I make the light? Can I make the light? I think I can. All right, that concludes my trip back to my hometown here of Boston. I know I shit on it a, a lot, but I still love the place. And I was going to show you where the Union Oyster House was, but I, I don't know where anything is anymore because of the big dig stuck everything under the ground. Can I make a U-turn here or no? Well, I'm gonna. Why would I do this? This is just going to take me back to where the fuck I'm going. Uh, whatever. That was it. Please listen to the Monday Morning Podcast. It's not right here. Union Oyster, right there. And I can't make a right. All right, see you. Go fuck yourselves. This is Faneuil Hall right here. This was some famous place where they used to have major meetings at or something and now they just uh, have banana republics drunk kids looking for slices screw be you and to my third grade eyes that was like the edgiest thing ever there's a girl whose butt cheeks are hanging out when she's going up the stairs you gotta get it wait for it there you go all right enough 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 uh, how many times you gotta go up uh, we're going all the way around. All the way around? Yeah. Dude, I had no idea your hand was that fucking wet. Well, dude. You should have gave me the fist bump. There we go. See that? It's also wet. All right, there you go. Harvard Stadium. Here we go. Coming up on the right-hand side. This is uh, when they talk about classic stadiums. I don't know why they ever bring this one up. Probably because it's a bunch of eggheads playing in here. Um, for all you guys who are like, they don't even go to school. Watch, watch Ivy League sports or shut the fuck up. Here it is. Look at that old ass stadium. I wonder if there's a way for us to get some footage of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on women's. This is phenomenal. You filming a segment here? Huh? Are you filming your segment here? Yes. I'm a, I'm a fan. Oh, you are? Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Hey, no problem, no problem. See that, that's one. Yeah, I came here a long time ago. Came here to a Harvard-BU game, and I remember uh, 
BU was playing that that stupid song, you know that. And it was like, da 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 go BU. And they had this giant sign that said, "This is phenomenal." I remember a long time ago, I took a trip down to Florida, and I walked into the old stadium where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers used to play, back when they had the cream sickle uniforms and Doug Williams was on the team. Fuck that! You got to get this right here. Look at that. See, old school horseshoe design, you sit on stone. Look at this. Say, you know, it's, it's obviously influenced by the Roman Colosseum. I went to a BU Harvard game back there a long time ago when they used to have a, uh, they used to actually have a football team. I'm gonna pull in here whether you can or you can't. All right, look at this. Post 9-11, I'm able to do this shit? Dude, how great is this? This is how stadiums used to be. You used to be able to just walk into them.